Hey, welcome back to Connection Point Studies. We are really glad to have you here. We are studying in this whole series called The Family Business. Now, I have a guest with me here today. It's Stacy. You're going to give us a woman's perspective because the title today is called A Good Partnership. So, um, it's just kind of fun. Uh, did your family have a business? No, we didn't. Both my parents worked for other businesses, other companies. But your dad was what? My dad yeah. was a logger at, in Cleelum, and okay. he's still there. And he still does some of that work he now, does. doesn't he? That's yes. kind of fun. Yeah, it is kind fun. of fun. So we're talking about developing a good, uh, good partnership today, and we're encouraging you to kind of dig into the study a little bit. And so we have a warm up, warm up question, which means everyone in your group has to answer it. So Stacy, give us a warm up question. All right. What TV show, either past or even current, most reflects your family? Similar traits, possibly a blended family. Um, it could be the Huxtables or the Flintstones, or a current one is Modern Family. Okay, and before you come back, I'm going to ask you to look at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 through 33, and be ready to talk about it. Okay, so Stacy, um, uh, I forgot to introduce what you do in the church, but tell us, I, I know you're a pastor here. Uh, tell us all your roles. I am the assistant children's pastor here okay. at Gold Creek. So you work with our kids, and yes. you understand what it's like, and, and you're also married, right? I am married, So you, yes. you've got this uh, partnership, good partnership down perfect, right? Well, not quite, but I'm okay. working on it. Okay, well, that's <laughs> how all of us are. We're all working on a better partnership, and that's really the topic of the day. And this particular passage is all about developing a good partnership. So what we want you to do is to begin to look at that partnership. Now, there's a, verses 1 through 5 has a, a relationship that our marriage partnership is uh, correlated with. This passage in, is compared to another relationship. What is that relationship? Take a minute, look at those verses, and come up with the answer, and we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so Stacy, as you look at verses 1 through 5 here, and we have it in front of us here, what, what relationship do you see as it being correlated with? It stands out, obviously, it is uh, as Christ is to the church. Right, so that's kind of an interesting relationship, right? Because we as a church are connected to Christ, and there's right. this uh, unity there that takes place, and, and that's really the, the best partnership, Christ and the church. That's what we're supposed to be like. Right. 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 So now, it begins to get a little bit more personal, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got an assignment for you. For guys, I want you to look at verses 25 and 28 and think about this. How do you feel about the standard set for you? So maybe you want to get in a group of guys and talk about that. And for gals, what verses do we want them to look verses at? Verses 22 and 23. Good luck, ladies. <laughs> now, how do you feel about that, wives? And we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so Stacy, um, I'm going to talk about this passage here. So I want you to read the verses that, as it has to do with our passage. Read verse 25 and 28 here. All right, verse 25. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. And 28. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. Okay, so as I look at this verse, the standard is so high. You know, I, I almost uh, go back to the very first verse, which says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. In my opinion, loving my wife as unselfishly as it talks about here is me submitting to my wife. It's my way of submitting to my wife to love her unselfishly, to think of her. And I'll be honest, I don't think I... I don't think I quite get that done the way it ought to be. Um, and every once in a while, we'll talk about it. And she could bring these verses up. We laugh about it. We tease each other a little bit and use Scripture a little bit. So my, my struggle is to love my wife in that way as much as I need to love her. And, and it's a great challenge for me. Now, uh, we have some verses for you. So I'll read the verses All for right. you. Verses 22. Uh, wives, this means submit to your husband as to the Lord. Oh, what a deal here. For a husband's ahead of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. He's the savior of his body, the church. How does that make you feel, Stacey? Well, I, I cringe because, for one, I 
wholeheartedly believe in this passage and when we are in the right alignment as it's been put out here everything works so well but my actions and my attitude often contradict this at home and it it causes problems when i get out of line (laughs) (laughs) well ultimately if each of us understand our position and you guys may need to talk about this a little bit as to how this relates in your own family i go back to verse one submission to one another each of us have our role and and actually i love the last verse which which it says uh, the husband must love his wife as as he loves himself and then the wife must respect her husband I kind of look at those two things going together. And Absolutely. this submission is your way of respecting and, and loving is my way of submitting. Right. Which is kind of the connection of the two together. Now, this is the next question that I think is going to be interesting for you to talk about as a group. How do you as a group, how far do you go? If, if wives are to mm-hmm. submit to their husband, how far are they to go? If husbands are to love their wives, how far are they to follow them? Or how far are they to submit? Talk about that, and then we'll come back. Okay, so Stacy, uh, as you think about that, it talks about submission. How far do you go? How, how, what, what's, is there a limit? Do you absolutely. just do whatever? No, absolutely not. There is a limit, and there are moral boundaries that you okay. need to stay within. And if your husband is asking or demanding to go beyond those boundaries that is not something that christ okay. would call us to do right so there, there there's a limit to your fellowship Absolutely. isn't there there's yes. this uh, there's a standard that we put christ at the head of our lives and if he's at the head of our life and and our husband is the head of the church right. i mean the, the family the, the christ the family um it's easy to follow him because right. he's trying to do what christ wants and so th- there's really clear limits there now, let's look at the next question, which is interesting. Um, there's a c- huge disconnect between um, what the church believes and what the secular world believes. Would you just take a little bit of time and contrast it? How does the world think about this, and how does the church think about it? Okay, so Stacy, uh, what do you see out there in the world? What, what do you see the uh, philosophy of the world is? Most common, I see um, it's just everybody's just equal. And, and I don't mean that in a way that women are less, but I don't see a strong leadership in mm-hmm. the family. And I would say it even goes a step further. I think they're equal in that they're equally selfish. I think well they're put, out for yes. them themselves. And so they're in a relationship where they're equally selfish and they operate equally Absolutely. selfish. And I actually, I'm guilty of that. Well, I think it's easy to be in this relationship only in it for yourself. Right. And that, that's where the problems come in. And the secular view uh, seems to be a, a huge contrast to what the scripture says, where we really need to live out a different life. We really do. Now, we have another question for you here. Um, and it's kind of the last question. Um, in your own words, what do you think the main goal of Christian marriage is? Take a look at these passages. And there's one verse in here that will stand out. And you'll have to look at it on your own. There's a verse that's going to stand out that will give you the main goal. Take a little bit of time and answer that question. Okay, Stacy, what do you think the main goal is here? Well, I believe it is found in verse 32. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. I believe we should operate as one, as husband and wife. It's so easy in our world to be so self-centered that the one is yourself. But when you're in a, a marriage relationship, the one is more about connecting in a way that you you begin to operate as one that's a powerful thought the bottom line for the marriage is for you guys to develop one ship so what i encourage you to do right now as a group is to to take a little bit of time and talk about how you're becoming one how to pray for each other as a couple and maybe as a couple you guys can share some uh, personal request and how you can become a better partner with each other and and uh, share a little bit about your marriages and share a little bit about your life as you talk about this Connection Point study, and we will see you next week at Connection Point Studies.